Bushings and bearings are almost certainly terms you've heard already, but do you know where they are on your bike? Do you know the difference? And do you know which is best for your bike or your components? And did you know that not all bearings and bushings are created equally? Well, I'm gonna go into great detail about these tiny parts. So firstly, a big thank you to IGUS, who are a high-end bushing manufacturer, and they've supported this video and supplied me with this IBIS bike so that I can show you where bushings and bearings go and what the main differences are. So obviously, bushings and bearings kind of have the same purpose in that they reduce friction between moving parts. And we obviously have a lot of moving parts on the bike, so let's delve right in and see where we would use them. So your rear derailleur is almost certainly made up of both bearings and bushings. You'll find bearings probably in your jockey wheels at the back here, and you'll probably have bushings in the pivot points of your parallelogram at the top here. In fact, SRAM is a big user of IGUS bushings already. A full suspension mountain bike will have both as well. You'll almost certainly have bushings in the mounting hardware for your shock here but you'll also probably have bearings in your linkages, maybe here. But some brands like Nikolai and Ibis actually have bushings too. So there's an Igus bushing in this linkage here. So pedals will have either bearings or bushings so that it spins on the axle. And some brands will have bearings, some will go for bushings, and some brands like Crank Brothers will actually use a mixture of the two. You're likely to get bushings in your brakes so that your levers can pivot, and sometimes you'll even get them in your calipers. It's possible you've got bushings in your forks and your dropper post, as these will help the shafts glide in and out or up and down. And you'll almost certainly find bearings in your headset, your bottom bracket, and both your hubs. That's all well and good, but why do we have both and what's the difference? So as I said, bushings and bearings are there to take up some of the friction between moving parts, but they're easily distinguishable even just on design. So a bearing will often have an inner ring and an outer ring, and in the center they'll have ball bearings or rollers, uh, much like this car wheel bearing here, just to illustrate the point. And a bushing will be much more simplistic. It may be made from brass or bronze or plastic like this one, but its simplicity can be its beauty as well because we can make really interesting shapes or like tiny pieces like this, or we can make unusual shapes like this spherical bushing here. And in fact, we've seen spherical bushings used on rear shocks like the Push 11.6 to stop the shock binding or even braking in some cases. Bearings are literally designed to rotate, that's it. And it can run a lot faster than a bushing, potentially, but that does depend on the quality and the condition of a bearing. I'll go into condition in a minute. For bushings, they can also rotate as well, but they can pivot and they can even slide as well, as we've seen. Uh, but the really interesting thing about bushings is the use of different materials. Even this polymer here can be made in different ways to, for example, be heat resistant for calipers or even to be vibration damping for use in forks. Bushings can be made from self-lubricating materials like bronze or these types of polymers here, which means that you don't need to lubricate them, you don't need to grease them, and maintenance is a lot less than, say, a bearing, which does need grease and lubricating, not only to keep it moving, but also to stop it wearing out quickly. So you may have noticed that on your bike, you do need to regularly maintain things like bottom brackets, hubs and headset, whereas, for example, your rear shock bushing doesn't need any maintenance at all, it'll just eventually wear out and you'll need to replace it. I often hear bearings being held with a higher regard than bushings, uh, especially when we're talking about pedals. Now, bushings 
may run slightly slower than bearings, but bearings need to be firstly high quality and well maintained for them to run quicker. And they'll certainly save you two or three watts, and that may be of interest to you if you're a cross country racer, certainly if you're on the World Cup scene. But for the rest of us, we may be more interested in bushings which don't need greasing up, say, on a weekly basis in order to give us that fast rolling benefit. And also, let's bear in mind that under load, they will feel very similar. So when you're pedaling, you may not actually notice the difference at all. Bearings really shine in areas that need low friction and potentially take a lot of high load. So they're great in hubs and bottom brackets, for example. Now their construction having ball bearings means that they can take axial load as well. And this is why they're great in places like hubs, but also in your headset. Say for example, you might need the pivot on the steering, but you will also have an immense amount of pressure from steering and loading the bike in single track and corners. The disadvantage with bearings is that they're largely made of metal, which means they can corrode quickly, especially if they're open to the elements. And that's why they need lubricating or greasing quite regularly to make sure that they don't wear out or provide extra friction from them just corroding effectively. Of course, no bearing is made equal. There are different qualities and different levels in terms of headsets or bottom brackets that you can buy, for example. Certainly sealed cartridge bearings are better at withstanding the elements and the dirt and the weather that we are subjected to on mountain bikes, but they do come at a cost and they can be quite expensive. Bushings can take a high load, but agreed they're not suitable for high load and high speeds, which is why you wouldn't find them in hubs, for example, the bearings are better suited to that. But where bushings really shine is when they're made from self-lubricating materials like this, because it means that they can be left open to the elements and they can take the everyday abuse that us mountain bikers throw at them. So they are great for exposed areas like shock mountings and pedals, for example. So most components are set as to which you can use. You can't, for example, swap out a bearing for a bushing um, and you might not want to in most cases anyway, but there are some components that give you a little bit more choice. Say for example, in pedals, you may want some bearings in a pedal so that they roll faster, but do require a lot more maintenance, or you may choose a pedal that has bushings so that you can have less maintenance periods. Or you can go for products like Crank Brothers who use a combination of the two. And in fact, Crank Brothers have recently moved to Igus bushings and they say their service periods have extended by eight times. Bearings are obviously used in linkages here and that's why they need regular servicing so that your suspension can remain nice and smooth. And when these things start to wear out, that's why we start getting a sort of a baggy feeling or a knocking in the rear, which is why they need replacing regularly because bearings wear out. Now you may not be able to replace your bearings for bushings, but there are brands out there like Nikolai and indeed Ibis who are using a combination of bearings and bushings. So there's actually a bushing in this linkage down here. And what this means is that rigidity remains in the rear suspension, even when those bearings start to wear out because the bushing will last a lot longer. Equally, you may not be able to swap out bushings or bearings in things like your derailers or your brakes, for example. But if you find that these things wear out quite quickly, perhaps your levers get baggy or the bodies of the derailleur needs uh, replacing and you're purchasing entire units to replace this, then maybe you want to start thinking about moving over to brands that use high end bushings like I guess, for example, in the future because it might actually save you money in the long run. No bushing is born the same. 
Different bushings will have different performance characteristics. So that could be load capacity or speed tolerance, or even tolerances to things like heat. And the fact that they're made from different materials means that they'll come with different costs, different weights, different friction rates, and different wear rates as well. Now, one of the key features about IGUS bushings is that they're made from self-lubricating materials. Now, they're actually injection molded from a choice of about 60 different engineered polymers with built-in solid lubricants. Now, this means they have low friction and low wear rates, but it also means that they're virtually maintenance free. These polymers are really light and corrosion free too. So that means they're really resistant to dirt, dust, oil, and moisture. All of the things that our bushings will be subjected to on a mountain bike anyway. Compared to PTFE coated metal alternatives, IGUS claim that their bushings can withstand many times more pressure and also have a significantly longer service life. So while it may be tempting to save a few pounds on cheap alternatives, you may end up saving in the long run. So that is the difference between bearings and bushings. And hopefully I've explained the design and the purposes and how no bearing or no bushing is made equally. But what do you think? Have you changed any bushings recently? Have you changed any bearings? Are you upgrading? Are you changing anything on purpose? And why have you done that? Let us know down in the comments below and help out that GMBN tech community with their future decisions. Thanks for watching.